Hey, Shoujo fans, and welcome to episode 44 of Shoujo Sunday. This week, we'll be reviewing episodes 10 through 12 of Fruits Basket with our very special guest, Avery, aka Kyoruyi. Let's dig in. Oh my gosh thank you so much for inviting me this is kind of crazy oh my gosh of course we are so happy to have you on our podcast thank you it's an honor oh my gosh no no you oh. <laughs> for those listening who might not know who you are already could you introduce yourself and the content that you create on twitter oh of course so i'm avery or kiru yi yi however you want to look at me as or know me as on twitter and basically i feel like i've really been come to know be known as someone who posts kind of shoujo content, mainly Fruits Basket on Twitter. It kind of ranges from different demographics, but mainly shoujo. I started doing it for fun and that's still what I'm there to do, but that's basically what I do there. Yeah, I I always love your content. Oh, thank you. <laughs> when it pops yes. up in my feed, I'm like, this is a good take. <laughs> yes, like we were, we were plotting for a while. I was just like, um, if we're going to do Fruits Basket, we should have Avery come on. Definitely. Oh <laughs> that's what i'm most yeah. known by i feel like even though i don't talk about it as much nowadays it still is it it means so much to me and it changed my life i don't i'm being genuine about that oh yeah, yeah. i mean i can pretty much say the same thing fruits basket is like a monumental piece of media in oh, my yeah. life yeah and to so many people so many people especially shoujo in general it just it really is a huge impact mm -hmm. do you have any like particular feelings overall besides that that you want to share about maybe the manga or either anime of Fruits Basket? I actually, I didn't grow up with it. I know a lot of people grew up with it and that's kind of how it impacted them. I only discovered it a few years ago, but I got into the anime and then I read the manga and it just has really changed me. Like not even just Toru and her as a character, but all the characters. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, it really does change your outlook on life yes definitely i think chica and i said over and over that fruits basket is so chock full of life lessons that you can apply and carry with you at any age oh definitely and that's the thing and i feel like that's why i would have liked to have it growing up but discovering it later on in life doesn't change the impact yeah so was the reboot your introduction it was actually i mean <gasps> years ago i I know. I Years ago, I had kind of heard about the 2001 series, and I watched the first episode, and I, not gonna lie, wasn't the most intrigued on it. I was like, what is this series about boys turning into animals? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then I didn't pick it back up. But then years later, I heard about the reboot, and then I got into it, and that's kind of my introduction, actually. It's oh, so wow. beautiful. Yeah. And I also feel... I feel so old. <laughs> I, I remember getting into the 2001 anime and like Avery was probably just like chill, like living life. As a wee baby. As a wee baby. <laughs> I'm just like, ooh, look, a cat. <laughs> I know. I was three years old when it ended and I'm like, oh, jeez. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. See, and I'm in the middle because I discovered the 2001 anime in like 2014 so Ooh. i'm like oh. i'm like the middle child here when it comes to oh, fruits yeah. basket <laughs> yes yeah i'm the baby <laughs> <laughs> also since you create so much shoujo content what do you love the most about shoujo honestly i mean there's so much i love about it i guess it's i've talked about it before but kind of embracing like femininity and stuff mm. and when it comes to romance and that how it's not scared of doing that I mean, which other demographics could also do, but I feel like Shoujo does a really good job at highlighting that. And I've always appreciated that because growing up, I guess, you know, you have that internal misogyny and mm. insecurity in being a woman. But growing up, I've, as I've discovered Shoujo, it's just kind of helped me embrace it a lot. And just romance in general. Shoujo romance is just chef's kiss. So oh, good. Yes, top tier. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh, I definitely agree. So... 
With our introductions out of the way, let us dive into episode 10 of Fruits Basket. It's Valentine's after all. And also, I mentioned this to Avery and Chica before we started recording. I think you guys listening would also like to know that while our soft serve summaries are still brought to us by Wikipedia this week, I edited them. (laughs) So uh, hopefully they're slightly less unhinged. (laughs) Okay. So, here is our soft serve summary. Kyo wakes up from a nightmare and goes to school without eating breakfast. Learning that that day is the day before Valentine's Day, Kyo unsuccessfully attempts to flee from school. After school, Toru and Kyo meet Kagura again, who was the main reason for Kyo's worry of Valentine's Day. Back at Shigure's house, Kagura invites Kyo on a date for the holiday. When he refuses, she invites Toru and Yuki, too, to make it a double date. Later, Shigure pushes Kyo too far when he states that, even though Kyo hates Yuki, he is afraid of getting to know him, forcing Kyo to run away. Worrying about him, Toru catches up to Kyo, encouraging him that he does not have to get along with Yuki if he doesn't want to. On Valentine's Day, Toru and Yuki accompany Kyo and Kagura for their double date, while Shigure delivers homemade chocolates to Hitori and the other Somas for Toru. Shigure and Hattori discuss Toru, a powerful dream they and others shared when they were kids, and Shigure's manipulation of Toru for his own ends. He then visits Akito for a while before returning home. As night falls, Toru and the Somas meet Mitsuru, Shigure's editor, who is frantic and concerned about Shigure's laziness regarding writing and deadlines. And that is our soft serve summary for episode 10. So let's get into themes. I'll start with Chika. What is your theme idea for this episode? I do try to be profound about themes, but um, (laughs) in this case, I just had um, K, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That fits. Avery, what is your theme idea for this episode? Yeah, I honestly, same with um, Chica, it was kind of hard for me to find a specific theme for it, but I feel like it was kind of like delving deeper into the characters when it came to their behaviors, especially when it came to a few certain characters and maybe some of their intentions. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of foreshadowing. Definitely. But yeah, nothing super specific this episode. Yeah, I agree. I also couldn't find a theme that I could kind of tie up in a bow. (laughs) I literally wrote, this is just the Shigure is mysterious and a little scary episode. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) Accurate. Yeah. So going from themes, let's get into our sprinkles on top, which is symbolism we might have found or other like literary devices. So Chica, do you have any sprinkles on top for this episode? I think I have two. Okay. They're both about Shigure. So one is Yuki saying that Shigure is like a ripple on the water. Mm -hmm. I loved that moment. Ooh, I know. Yeah. I was just like, ooh, spot on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I feel that if you compare Shigure to to like a ripple on the water just waves in general it's like it is true like the waves come and go and they ultimately control the moon right and the moon maybe in this case would be a keto but that might be going too far ahead but yeah yeah the, the moon i think controls the tide which never mind but still accurate. No, that fits. That's very accurate. (laughs) I love that. Oh, I didn't think of it that way, but I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My other one was just actually more of a scene. It's when Shigure puts his hand on Toru's head and his eyes widen because I think at that moment he just acknowledges how innocent she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I caught that too. Yeah. For me, it's like, oh, he's having this realization that what he's doing could possibly hurt this really innocent person that trusts him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great sprinkles on top. Yeah. There's a lot of sugary stuff in that episode. Mm -hmm. Avery, do you have any sprinkles on top? Nothing super specific either, but I thought when Toru had mentioned kind of Kyo and Yuki's hearts, and how they kind of put up a strong front, but they're a lot more fragile as you look deeper. I felt like that kind of was a little bit of a throwback to her rice ball, pickled plum metaphor scene. And I just, I don't know, that means a lot to me. And I feel like this entire episode kind of revolved around the characters and, you know, the fronts they put on when it comes to Shigure and Kyo. You know, there's a lot 
more deeper stuff happening internally. So I felt like that kind of connected in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see it. Yeah, I see it as well. Right? And I feel like that was kind of a theme of the episode if we really want to get into themes. Mm -hmm. I have two sprinkles on top. I'm going to do my best to keep these spoiler free. So if you're concerned about spoilers, maybe skip ahead to the floats your boat timestamp in the show notes. I'm going to try to keep it spoiler free. But if you're like, I cannot be spoiled, just skip ahead. So there is foreshadowing when Toru goes after Kyo and she stays with him in the woods even when he's trying to push her away. Oh. That's all I can say about the foreshadowing oh. on that. That struck me. <laughs> that struck me a lot on this watch. Yeah. Oh, yes. Also, we know much later, probably final season, I think, what that dream Shigure and the others shared was about. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Shigure is the dog. And dogs are naturally drawn to pleasing their owners. And that's all I'm going to say on that. That's all I can say on that. (laughs) But yeah, that may be a stretch. No, no. Everything in Fruits Basket is intentional. Oh, true. Yeah, true. I will give myself that then. I appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) All right. So let's move into Fliss Your Boat, which is what we liked about the episode. Avery, why don't you kick it off? What is one of your likes? Oh, where do I start? I have so many likes this episode. I really liked the scene with Kyo, even though it was heartbreaking. I really liked the scene where Toru had ran after Kyo. And I just always appreciated the way that she respected his boundaries, Mm. especially both physical and emotional boundaries. She didn't push him to kind of talk about things. She's just there for him. She didn't push him for questions or details on what happened. And I really like... If we're really comparing manga and anime scenes, in the manga, she was much more close to him. Meanwhile, in the anime, they kind of changed it, so she gave him more boundaries. And that's just a a change that I really appreciated. So that's a scene that I really like, and especially the scene when they're walking back to Shigure's and he taps her on the head as a way to show his appreciation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was so sweet. He has a hard time sharing it with words, but it just, oh, that scene gets me. Oh my goodness, me too. Me too. I definitely love all all of that, the way she's just allowing him to have his feelings and tell him that all of his feelings are valid. And it's just so cute watching him slowly unfold, navigating how to communicate with her. Like, mm-hmm. he doesn't know how to be like, hey, thanks. And like, I mean, yeah. like, he's done it. But, you know, the way he just kind of taps her is, is really cute to me. Yeah. I know. And it's like, you don't really get it at first, but then you're like, oh, no, he's just he's just awkward. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know how to show. Yeah. He doesn't know how to show appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I put this as banana split because I didn't know where to put it. But in connection to like that scene, though, I guess slight spoiler for real. Sorry. I won't go into it, but I think that Kyo needing to hate Yuki is because it's one of the few things he has control over. Mm. And so it's like not being able to do that or people saying, you don't need to act on this. It's like, well, what else can he possibly control then if not what he likes and what he hates? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that is interesting. Yeah. I feel like it's so complex when it comes with his relationship with Yuki mm-hmm. because you can see that like they could very easily get along, but I don't know if it's Kyo being stubborn or the cat spirit inside of him that just so detests the rat that he can't see past that. True, true. Yeah. That's an interesting way to look at it, yeah? Yeah. Chica, what is one of your likes? I think just at the start of the episode, there is this illustration of piles of chocolate falling out of someone's locker <laughs> because Hana wanted to, or Hanajima wanted to see Yuki's locker to see if that would happen. But instead, it's like, oh, no, that didn't happen because somebody sneaked into his locker and then <laughs> took all the chocolates out and put it in the trash <laughs> and left their <laughs> chocolate in there. And so it was just funny just like seeing this little scenario play out. Um, yeah, that <laughs> the fan club <laughs> girls are so unhinged. <laughs> oh, they're so chaotic. That's something I like though is how they kind of in this episode especially how they mix the high school slice of life with all the drama happening in the background. Yeah. Yes. I like the comedy in this. Yeah, it's so well executed for sure. Mm-hmm. So my first floats your boat is Toru's excitement about going on a date. Oh, oh yeah. 
Oh, it's yes. so precious that nobody can deny her. They're like, yeah, sure, we're going to do it now. Look how happy she got. Yes. And like, Yuki could not deny her. So it's like, okay, Kagura is getting what she wants now. Yeah. No. Avery, what is another one of your floats your boat? Oh, okay. Honestly, I really liked how oh, Sugar is just such a menace this episode. <gasps> he, I feel like this is one of the first episodes you really see that more kind of menacing side to him because up until this episode he's kind of not just a comedic relief but kind of just a comedic relief Mm -hmm, you know this episode you see a lot more of you know maybe there's a little bit more going on with him (laughs) definitely i was so very intrigued by all of the sugar ray breadcrumbs that they left in this episode Mm -hmm. you know with his gaze softening on toru because of the purity and sweetness like we talked about in sprinkles on top Mm -hmm. the dream oh yeah his words and his thoughts surrounding akito and like going back to my first watch through i really had no idea what to expect because i'm i'm guys i'm sorry i'm an anime only please don't oh my gosh but really that's crazy that's so cool i only have like one thing of the manga and i remember reading it at the airport like last summer a little bit but i have never like completed the manga i would love to someday oh Oh my god but yeah, so I ha- I I would love to get into all of that, but time is oh, a thing. Oh, understand. um, yeah, 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 I would really, really, truly love to. Yeah. But on my first watch through, I really had no idea what to expect. Um, but it it hits very differently after knowing how things go seeing all of these breadcrumbs placed it's just so cool to see that it's being presented in the first 10 episodes too oh yeah this entire episode there was just foreshadowing galore there's so much of it yeah mm. and re-watching it with knowing it's like oof, yeah it's crazy yeah it hits different mm-hmm. i'm glad as well that he just started unveiling himself as like a morally gray character like mm-hmm. yes. basically a villain but a morally gray character <laughs> like oh uh, yeah. yeah yes right and i like that he's aware of it too that's something i've always liked with Shiri, is he's very aware that he's he's aware that he's kind of a terrible person but <laughs> yes I like that <laughs> he acknowledges it I love how in one point in the episode, he's just like being the silly guy. He's like, you know, don't be a cheapskate. Don't split the bill on the date. And then he's like talking to Hattori about how he's manipulating Toru. Like, what? (laughs) That's a 180. (laughs) Your duality, man. Yeah. Yeah. Chica, what is one of your likes? Actually, in connection to what we were just talking about, Hattori confronting Shigure on using Toru as a pawn yes. was one of my likes. Yes. Mm. So I was just like, okay. Yeah, Hattori, I'm so glad that, you know, he called him out on that because, you know, in uh, the last podcast episode, we were just talking about how Akito almost blinded him in his left eye and stuff after he was trying to get married with Kana. And I guess just him having that mini therapy session with Toru in a way, made him feel more connected to her to the point where he's like, okay, I see what you're doing. And not only do I see what you're doing, Shigure, I want to let you know I am not going to be your ally in this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is nice because like somebody, like an adult needs to sort of step in to just be like, you know, what you're doing to these kids is wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Shigure can complain about his old bones all he wants, <laughs> but he is not an adult. <laughs> no, not by any means. Yeah. <laughs> not from a maturity standpoint he yeah. physically is but <laughs> yeah yeah avery what is one of your likes if you have any floats your boat left i think just kind of going off of what chica was talking about with the whole valentine's day thing i loved the whole theme of this episode and the whole valentine's celebrations going on it was just super cute like all this trauma is happening with kyo and you know shigari being a menace but then you have all this cute valentine's day stuff happening and i I love it. I love the way that Fruits Basket can balance all of the drama with the slice of life cutesy stuff happening. It makes so that the dramatic stuff isn't like as jarring Mm -hmm. emotionally. So I appreciate that. It's something about the series that I appreciate overall. Definitely same. It makes you really build a connection with the characters when you can just see them living their life and growing. Right. Before all of this curse stuff kicks (laughs) in and all of that. Right. I know a lot of people criticize, well, not a lot, but some people criticize Fruits Basket season one kind of being more slow and low key. But I think it's kind of nice being able to just see the everyday slice of life of all these characters and relationships and getting attached to them. 
before all the other stuff hits. Oh, yeah. I live for that. That is a 10 out of 10 for me personally. Oh, same. Yeah. I think people need to, you know, be able to grow with the characters. And it's easier to do that when they're doing regular slice of life things than to just kind of fast forward into the action. Because if you do that, you're not going to be as connected to each character as you could be. Exactly. Yeah. That reminds me of what we were talking about with Ashley on the last episode. When Hathari is introduced and we get his tragic backstory right off the bat, yes, we feel for him, but it's more sympathy, like, out of, like, oh, that's so sad for you, and then, like, we have this connection with this character and we're invested in his life and relationships like we are with the other characters because we've watched them for several episodes now. Exactly, and you know them, right? Mm -hmm. That's the difference, yeah. Are there any remaining floats your boat, or are we ready to move into Banana Split? I'm all done for that. I have one last one. It's just Toru making chocolate for all of her friends. I thought that was really adorable. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Why didn't I write that? I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. When I watched Fruits Basket 2001, it actually inspired me to try to make Valentine's Day chocolates for people. Oh. Oh my I got this a mold of fortune cookies. So I was going to do like little fortune cookie chocolates with like a fortune inside. And I had no idea what I was doing. It did not go well, but people were very nice about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's the thought that counts. Definitely. I thought they were great. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into banana split. I only have one banana split. Mm. So um, I'm just going to go first. So I'm like... Banana split because I thought this was like a very funny moment. I think the way it was presented in the episode was funny, but just like peeling back the layers in the context and thinking about it more was like, oh, that's like not good. So this is about Keo panicking about Valentine's Day. He feels unsafe at school because of the Zodiac curse and unsafe at home or outside of school because of Kagura. And it's funny watching him be like, oh my God, Valentine's Day what do I do? And he's like trying to escape and that's all very funny. But just like the fact that Kagata makes him feel so unsafe is definitely more ice cream, you scream leaning. Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, my first banana split was just like, you know, if you have to threaten somebody to go on a date, maybe you shouldn't date. (laughs) Yes, precisely. (laughs) Maybe. Avery, what is one of your banana splits if you have any? So uh, kind of what I wrote is just kind of delving into Kyo's character. I don't really know if this counts as much, but and just, you know, why he acts the way he does, mm. kind of going into the way that he acted so defensive with Shigure there, with what he brought up. Oh. I feel like up until this episode, Kyo, his behaviors were kind of played off maybe as a trope because he's kind of like a tsundere, but I feel like there's a lot more to them, as you can see in this episode, mm. with the way he acts. Yeah. It's more of a defense mechanism. And as Toru had said, it seems like he's protecting something and protecting his himself, maybe. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, possibly. So yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about. Okay. Are there any more banana splits? What kind of movie is Mogita? Like, what is that <laughs> movie? <laughs> it looked like the, the oh shonen-iest God. shonen that ever shonen. Right. Like, <laughs> I just, because I, I was watching it, and I, at first I was like, this seems like a kid movie. Why would you want to go on a date yeah. watching <laughs> a kid movie? It should be PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I was thinking that, too. And also, now that we're thinking about the movie, this could also be Banana Split for me. They're on a double date, right? Right. So why is it? that Yuki and Kyo are sitting next to each other and Kagata and Toru are sitting next to each other. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't, that's not how you, that's not a date. Yeah. Like, I, I, you're all just hanging out. Wait, <laughs> is that what happened? I yeah. thought that it was, I thought they were on the outsides. Did I make that up in my mind? Wow. No, because it shows um, Yuki and Kyo kind of like hating the movie because they have the, like the disgusted look on their face and the blue lines next to their eyes. Yeah. And then it pans over to Kagata and Toru sitting next to each other, tearing up at the movie. So like, why aren't you sitting next to your date? <laughs> no. I never thought of that. Also, there was no one else in the theater, I don't think, or at least right. not anyone I could see. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which indicates, because they don't have COVID during that time, that it's a bad movie. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But yeah, that's all I had for a banana split. Okay, Avery, do you have any more? I do not think I do. Okay, does anybody have any Rocky Road? I personally do not. Oh, it just is going back to, you know, the scene (laughs) where Toru comforted 
or went to comfort Kyo. Mm. Mm. I talked about that before, but that one just, I have a soft spot for them. So that makes me emotional. No, of course, that's totally understandable. And I see how that could be in Rocky Road. While Kyo didn't say anything, it felt like a vulnerable moment for him because Mm -hmm. like, I mean, the way I interpreted it is like, it it seemed like her words were reaching him, you know? So, and that's profound because he always has that wall up. Mm -hmm, Right? So that one got me. Yeah. Yeah. It would have to get you. You're a Kyoru Yi. Yes. I know. It has to. It, would, it wouldn't be me without without that. Come on now. Yeah. Okay. Is there any hot fudge? I do have one. No, I just had ice cream. You scream. It's you. Okay. Avery, do you have hot fudge though? I actually do. Ooh, okay. This is nice. You know, it's usually me on these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> do you do you mind if I go first just because I have to issue a trigger warning? Oh, Ooh, of course. Okay. Go right ahead. Okay, so getting into hot fudge, guys, I'm just going to put a little trigger warning for suicide and suicidal thoughts mm. really quick. Mm-hmm. So we are introduced to Mitsuru, Shigure's editor, and... I didn't like that she was shown literally drawing a razor blade to end end her life because Shigure's manuscript isn't on time. I feel like they were trying to make light of suicide and suicide ideation in that moment. Right. And I I feel like if they were striving for humor, it could have been accomplished with her just being frantic in the situation and like at the door and like hounding Sugar A or whatever. But I I think making her suicidal was a giant line that they crossed. Yes, I agree. That actually is one of the things that I wrote. I have another thing, but I remember when I first watched that episode and I was like, oh my gosh. And then they put it off as humor and I was like, oh, it's supposed to be funny. It's not funny. Yeah. And I think it becomes a running joke, actually, if I'm recalling correctly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's super not cool. That's no. like one of the few, very few things I don't like about Fruits Basket. I agree. There's a few different jokes that I'm like, these did not age well. These are not cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And yeah, that's one of them. I just remember it from the source, you know, just they made it as if it was like funny. But I think now as adults, it's kind of just like, oh, okay, Shigeru is like, her 13th reason like you know yeah god it's awful yeah which is really dark but he just keeps pushing her and and stuff and i didn't have it in hot fudge but i I had an ice cream you scream just his treatment of her yes Mm -hmm. because honestly like i guess this didn't age well either but if your editor has to work that hard to get your shit they're gonna just drop your shit and fine you yeah no kidding (laughs) they're gonna drop your manuscript or whatever and then you're just screwed so right unless you're George R. R. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can be playing somebody like that. No. Right, no. right. You can't. Like, we're all still waiting on the last Game of Thrones book, dude. Like, come <laughs> come on. <laughs> That's not even the last one. It's the... Oh my God. It's like the last two, right? <laughs> right. It's Winds of Winter, and then the last one is supposed to be Dreams of Spring, I think. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh, wow. Well, time's a ticking, George. <laughs> I know. I haven't seen or I haven't read any of it. I don't know, but... I know it's a long series. <laughs> I didn't even know it was still ongoing. Yes. Yeah. It was written before any of us were born, to be honest. Yeah, wow. And right, he's... and it's still... <laughs> <laughs> wow. He says I finished it. I feel a little less bad about not having my manuscripts done anymore. <laughs> yeah, don't feel bad. I mean, he is terrible. Everyone thought it was going... Winds of Winter was going to come out soon, and it's just been the overall gag. So for me, I'm just like, at this point, George, you should be writing the last book, too. And just at this point, like, when you announce that, oh, Winds of Winter is coming out, like, in 2025, then Dreams of Spring is coming out in 2026. Yes. Because this is ridiculous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are all tired, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. All right, Avery, do you have any more hot fudge? Okay. Um, honestly, this one could kind of connect to previous episodes that you guys might have talked about. But the treatment of Kyo by Kagura, but also mm. all the somas in general and Shigure and the way he pushed him and ticked him off, I feel like Kyo is just treated like garbage by them. Yeah. And also it's sometimes played off as comedy a lot of the time. And I'm like, eh, it doesn't sit right with me. I like Kyo a lot as a character. Maybe that's just me and my own feelings because I have a soft spot for him, but that's something that kind of kind of takes me off a bit. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Right. I think that if Kagura was going after somebody else in the Zodiac, they would have been shut her down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because it's Kyo, they just allow it, which is really gross. But yeah. 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 It's really sad. Do we want to move into Ice Cream, Ice Cream? Okay. Sure. All right. 
So, Chica, what is your first ice cream you scream? Shigure, like, manipulating situations to turn things out to be how he wants it rather than being upfront about it. I think instead of him being manipulative, he could probably just ask Toru to be around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the high-handedness of his machinations really irritates me. And that's like the lightest way I could put that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then Toru's non-date with Yuki. Oh, Oh, yeah. 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 (laughs) I feel like it has been a minute. Like everyone knows I was almost moving and then not moving. And so all of my manga is still in boxes. So it's been a while since I've reread so I don't remember if there was like more vibes I like to think that there was more vibes in the manga between Yuki and Toru at this point but for it to be her first date and she's so excited about it and then it's just sort of glossed over as we're seeing this Mogita movie and Kagura is all on Kyo and I feel like there was a little there was a certain amount of tension of or at least awareness of Toru being like Kagura is on Kyo or whatever and then also with Yuki just being more of a love interest I don't know I mean I know that she was thinking about Shigure and talked to Yuki about it but I think there should have been more to it because that's not a date that's just you hanging out Mm -hmm. yeah I agree I think there should have been more date vibes especially because at this point in the series it does seem like Yuki is being kind of pushed a little bit to be the most potential love interest at this time right Mm -hmm. so there could have been some like tension of like I don't know, maybe like a hand brushes up against a hand and there's a blush even. That would have been enough for me. Right. right? Yeah. yeah, I felt like there was not a lot going on on the date. Yeah. I just have one ice cream you scream. Okay. And this is probably the only time Hanajima will ever be in ice cream you scream for me. Oh. <laughs> it's just that she takes Yuki's chocolates out of his locker without even asking him first. She just claims them as hers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's the most lightest ice cream you scream ever, but <laughs> she could have just no. been like, You gonna eat this? Yeah. <laughs> and then take it. Do you want them? Can I have them? He probably would have said take them, but yeah. He looked kind of I don't know if he looked annoyed at the fact that there were so many like girls putting stuff in his locker and taking things out, or that she was just taking the chocolates without asking. No. <laughs> probably both. <laughs> right. I think he was slightly just more reacting to the fact that people were going in and out of his locker like that i think so that's an invasion of privacy yeah Yeah, versus like hanajima taking (laughs) chocolate yeah it's like that would be like 10 percent to the 90 percent of people going (laughs) in and out of my locker (laughs) yes Uh, avery do you have any ice cream you scream left they kind of just connect to the hot fudge that we talked about last okay Mm. the joke that just did not sit right with me yeah sometimes some of the jokes in fruits basket just I love the series with all my heart, but yeah, some of the jokes jokes did not age very well. Yeah. So that's the only thing that I would say I have there. All right. Is that everything for episode 10? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move into episode 11. This is a wonderful in. Here is our soft serve summary brought to us by Wikipedia and a little bit of me. After the end-of-term exams, Momiji invites Toru, Yuki, and a reluctant Kyo to a hot springs inn owned by the Soma family for White Day. When Shigure asks Toru about not being able to afford her school trip fee, she evades the question, causing the Somas to realize that she used all of her part-time earnings from the previous month buying ingredients to make Valentine's chocolates for them. After Toru steps out to take a bath, Momiji compares her to a traveler in a story who was duped into giving everything away to strangers and eventually eaten by demons taking advantage of her kindness. The next day, Toro and the Soma boys visit the hot springs and spend the night at the inn there. In the hot spring, the hostess speaks with Toru, saying that she hopes that Toru will meet her child someday, who is the monkey of the Zodiac, and become friends with them. Later, Yuki and Kyo play an intense game of ping pong. Toru attempts to join, but misses the ball completely. In private, Yuki presents a ribbon to Toru as his return gift for the Valentine's chocolates. The next morning, Momiji reveals that he and Hatsuharu will be going to high school with everyone as first years, though Toru is more shocked that Momiji is a year younger than her despite his young appearance. And that is our soft serve summary. So... Getting into themes, Avery, what is your theme idea for this episode? Honestly, it kind of felt like it was 
revolving around the theme of morality mm. is what I was looking at in Toru's kindness and gratitude and the way she kind of is given so little and she gives so much to those around her. Yeah. And just the way that's viewed by others. I feel like that was a huge thing. That was a huge theme this episode. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Chica, what is your theme idea? Just, I wish you happiness. Oh, okay. The quote from the most uh, foolish traveler in the world story. Momiji said it. I watched the sub, y'all. But yeah, it's like the traveler was t- saying like, oh, I wish you happiness mm-hmm. or something. And Momiji was kind of making that parallel with how the traveler is just like Toru. And so Toru is being the type of person that I'm going to spend my money on buying chocolate ingredients so I can make it for my friends. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, my theme attempt... <laughs> for this episode is that kindness and generosity should not come at a huge expense to yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. that works. Yeah. Do we have any sprinkles on top? I personally do not. I do. Oh, okay. It's not super deep. It just is I really liked the idiot traveler story. Oh, same. Twins. Mhm. That scene just right you get it it's it's one that has always just really made me emotional Mm -hmm. and i feel like toru's character some people might criticize that she's too kind she's a doormat but and that's kind of how the the idiot traveler story is viewed they view kindness as foolish it's even in a funny books or a funny stories book yeah and that's kind of how people view kindness in some ways and selflessness they're like you need to be harsher and stand up for yourself when kindness in itself isn't really a flaw in that way it's not necessarily symbolism but that's something that i really liked no i think it counts i had that as my sprinkle on top as well okay yeah just like you were saying you know there are a lot of people that think that toru is like a doormat for everyone around her but i think in hearing momiji talk about this story you're able to just see that the traveler at the end died happy Mm -hmm. because someone had given them a gift and it was their first gift and they were so thankful for it even though it just had was a paper that said idiot on it or whatever but still I think that while people might have certain misgivings on it I think there's nothing wrong with just seeing the best in people yeah Yeah. and I think that that's ultimately exactly how Toru is rather than just assuming somebody is bad she gives people the benefit of the doubt and she's been through so many rough situations but that's never stopped her from being optimistic and so with this story you just get to see like okay like it's sad that this person ended up passing away because of how giving they were but they aren't any worse for doing that I mean they're they're gone but there wasn't a moment during their travels where they regretted giving away stuff because they thought they were truly helping someone. Exactly. It- right. At the end of the day, that traveler felt like she lived a worthy life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And that's all that should matter. Exactly. I feel like kindness is something that you don't really regret, you know, and that's something that applies to real life. I feel like Fruits Basket in general teaches a lot of messages about kindness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually had put the traveler story in my banana split for all the reasons we're all talking about, just <laughs> because, you know, it is so sad that kindness is viewed as a weakness or a, vulnerabil- a vulnerability when I just agree with Momiji's stance on it because he admires the traveler and what she did. And I don't know. It's like, it's very banana split for me, just for all of the above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did have a slight ice cream you scream about it, though. Okay. But that's because I forgot that Momiji is just a year younger. So at first, I was just like, why are teachers allowing this story to be read to (laughs) to be read to elementary school kids? Like, that's messed up. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all are talking about death? Who authorized you to do that? That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we want to move into Floats Your Boat? Sure. Okay. So, Chica, what is one of your likes? This also just touches on something that Avery talked about earlier with the last episode, but I really do enjoy seeing Toru and, like, her crew of friends worrying about simple things like studying. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, like, this test, I think I did well, I studied for it and stuff. Getting to see them actually be teenagers is just nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I actually have a few things when they're all talking about exams and stuff. I love that Yuki tutored Toru, which is also, again, kind of pushing them as like the ship. It's like, mm. oh, he, he spent like time at night tutoring her. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that Hanajima severely failed her exams. <laughs> oh my God. Her powers can't help her with schoolwork. <laughs> that was very, very funny to me. Mm -hmm. And um, my last little bit in that scene was Toru's adorable thought about Kyo. Oh. She's like, for some reason, imagining him hunched over a book makes me smile. And I love that oh. so much. Oh, Yeah, they're so cute. I know. Also, the way Kyo is like in canon, like an actual smart character. I yes. Just, he's a nerd. I love him. Mm -hmm. Avery, what is one of your floats your boat? I, okay, I have a couple, but I really like the scene in the hot spring while they're all playing ping pong together. Yes. <laughs> and Tori went to hit the ball and missed. And Relatable. And all floor watching it roll. <laughs> it was so funny. That scene gets me every time. Oh my gosh, me too. Yeah. It just reminded me, it reminded me of the manga as well, because it really did play out like that, where like Yuki walked off so that he could laugh because he didn't want to hurt her feelings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was sweet. Yeah. A very quick floats your boat is I'm glad that Toru's grandfather at least offered to pay her school trip fee. Oh, yeah. Even if she was like not letting him do that or whatever. I'm glad to see him step in for something for a change. Mm -hmm. No, I was banana split on that. If I had feelings. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I probably could have put it there. Yeah, I think he should have paid it. I don't know why it was like a question. You should just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, honestly, you're right. Yeah, for sure. That should have been banana split. <laughs> can you give us another floats your boat, Chica? Yeah, we'll just make this whole oh, conjunction because it's like three different points, but they're all sort of together. So when Kyo and Yuki and Shigure realize that Toru spent her salary on <laughs> getting chocolate ingredients... <laughs> And so then Kyo was so mad and then he like literally like managed his anger and it went from like 100 to like 10 was just like, you should go take a bath. Just go take one. <laughs> Like, it's open right now. <laughs> yes. And, so, and Shigure had to applaud him for it because <laughs> they knew just how mad he was. I love oh. seeing him really making an effort to, like, control that anger mm -hmm. and think about how his words are perceived and how he's talking to her. Even though his anger is coming from a place of caring, you know, it is really, really nice to see him take a step back and really put effort into how he communicates with her. Right. And he does that from like the beginning. You mm -hmm. see him actively trying to make an effort to get better with his anger and he has a hard time controlling it. Yeah. And he's just getting better at it. Yeah. Right? I know. And he like apologizes and he obviously in this scene tries to control it. And that just, I love that. It's so sweet. It's such a small thing. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing that I liked, which is sort of a two-parter, is in order to repay her for making him chocolate, because it's not like he has money, was just like, oh, I'll go to the hot springs with you. Yes. And she gets so happy, just so excited about it. And then he's just gazing at her and he's like, what am I going to do with you? Oh. And like my heart was just like, oh, like it just started beating. So <laughs> oh <laughs> like, my oh. God. that scene gets me like if you look they're actually both blushing yes. and like he's just taken aback about her excitement and guys we have shoujo sparkles oh, we do <laughs> kyo's first shoujo sparkles and yes. then if you guys know the story i won't ruin it for anybody but anyone who's already watched a red fruits basket it's like our first laundry scene y'all oh, i know oh i was thinking gosh. it too i was i wasn't gonna say it but like yes 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 yes, yes. yes. like this is where it happens <laughs> oh my gosh the foreshadowing oh okay <laughs> Avery, do you have any floats your boat left? Kind of just that scene that Chika just mentioned with Kyo and Toru telling him, or him telling her that he'll accompany her to the hot springs as his gift back. And I just love how he doesn't give her a physical gift. It's his present. Yeah. Yes, but even then, she's so excited about it. Yeah. They're such like, what is it? Love language. What's the word? Yeah, like quality, <laughs> quality time. time. Quality time. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yes. That is them. I, yes. It was so sweet. Oh. Chika, do you have any floats your boat left? The property manager losing her shit on Kyo <laughs> <laughs> because Momiji implied that Kyo wanted to sleep in the same room as Toru. Um, 
<gasps> That's the one thing that I do lo- love about the property manager because she's mentally somewhere else like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh and my it's gosh. so funny. Like, why is she like this? Right. It's like at the drop of a hat, she is just going off. <laughs> yeah. I also love that Momiji calls her the properness when she's the proprietress. That is so cute. Oh, yes. Yeah. I love that Toru brings her mom to the hot spring. It's like oh. low-key rocky road. Uh, yeah, that's where oh, I Oh, yeah, it. right? Yeah. Yeah, but oh, it's so sweet. She like brings her in and is like asking her if she can feel the water. It's so cute. It is. It's also so sad, but it's so sweet. Yeah. It is sad. I know. It's like I was like more inclined to put it in Floats Your Boat for some reason when I was making the notes, but I have, I have in parentheses like Rocky Road question mark because it's definitely <laughs> both. Yeah. It is. I also appreciated that the proprietress apologizes to Toru about having a bad impression of her before she ever met her. Like, Toru didn't know that, and she wouldn't have known that unless the proprietress told her. And I like that she took the time to, like, apologize for it, even though she technically didn't have to. Yeah. Right. You know, honestly, I think that this is something that Akito was thinking about. Mm -hmm. You know how they said that, or at least in the last episode, Hattori was talking about how both Akito and Shigure were using Toru as a pawn. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like in this case, Akito probably just thought people would think the absolute worst of this girl who's like living with three guys that's not related to her. And then the proprietress just being like, oh, you're nothing like how I imagined. It's kind of going more in Toru's favor, or I guess possibly Shigure's favor, depending on how you would think of it. Like, you might think that she is some sort of, I don't know, like, I don't automatically think there's anything wrong with girls that live with guys. But I mean, if we're going with people who are really uptight, then like maybe she's promiscuous or something. Mm -hmm. But in all actuality, she's just a really kind girl and she's healing people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just have one more floats your boat. It's when Yuki gives Toru the ribbon for White Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was like one of mine. That was one of my conjunction ones. Yeah. When I initially watched Fruits Basket, like my first ever watch, like the 2001 or whatever, I was shipping Yuki and Toru because at this point in the anime, they really are kind of pushing Yuki as the love interest. Mm Mm-hmm. And honestly, even still, like, not shipping them, this scene makes my heart skip a beat with, like, the vibes. Mm -hmm. Especially when he's, like, touching the ribbon and stuff. And I'm like, okay, he's, like, getting kind of close with her. But, like, if I may, I know I talked about this in our first Fruits Basket episode. I do watch the English dub, and I just gotta say something else about Eric Vale's voice. Because, oh, woo, this scene, Eric Vale... My man, in the off chance you ever listen to our Fruits Basket coverage, sir, I need you to please know that that your voice is made of magic. (laughs) My God, that's it. The end. (laughs) Cut on Floats Your Boat. That should be the audiogram of the week. (laughs) I'll be so embarrassed, but you're allowed. I I give you permission. (laughs) No, I just, it was so romantic. Oh my God. Mm. Just, okay, so first he gives her the gift. She automatically starts wearing it, Mm -hmm. which was really sweet. Yeah. And then he calls her princess. I had it in all caps. I was like, princess? (gasps) Okay. (laughs) Feelings. And then the ribbon kiss. Mm. Y'all, I was like, okay, I'm ascending. I know what happens, but oh my gosh, I would die if somebody did that. Like, mm. Oh my gosh. I might have to like clip the scene in English and send it to you guys just so you can hear Eric Vale's performance. Like... (laughs) I know, because I haven't seen the English dub all in full. His Yuki voice, like, literally destroys me, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm, I gotta stop. I'm sorry. Gianna has been trying to convert me into being, like, an Eric Vale fan this entire time. <laughs> Just for Eric Vale. <laughs> this entire time, you've been recapping Fruits Basket. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like, I think I, like, send her videos. I'm yeah. like, hey, look, if you want to hear Eric Vale's performance, here's a, here's a clip for you. <laughs> I'm clipping this when we're done. I'm sending it to you guys. Okay. <laughs> I will convert. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. That aside, are we ready to move into Banana Split? Oh, I had one last one. Oh, okay. Go ahead. My last one is about Momiji. So it's just Toru freaking out about Momiji being one year younger (laughs) because she didn't understand, right? Like, because before Momiji was like, oh, I want to bathe with you. Yeah. I want to sleep in your room. (laughs) And she says nothing wrong with it because she thinks that Momiji is in elementary school. But actually, he's just a year younger. So it's wrong. It's not the same. <laughs> no. Yeah, I actually, that was my only nuts point for this episode was that Momiji was a year younger, but I, I feel you completely. It was hilarious. Yeah. It was so funny. And it's like, she finally understood why Yuki and Kyo were so vehement about him being away from her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it all made sense. <laughs> yeah. So let's move into Banana Split. I only have one left. I don't know about you guys. Oh, two. I kind of have one, but we kind of covered on it before. Okay. Yeah, do you want to go ahead then, Avery? Okay, well, this kind of just goes back to the Idiot Traveler story Mm -hmm. and why it was in a funny stories book, (laughs) because... It just is so wild to me. Like, haha, so funny. This person was really kind and gave away everything they had and then died. It's just hilarious. <laughs> I agree completely. That's pretty much why I had it in Banana Split, too. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's a funny story. Yeah. I think the first time I ever watched Fruits Basket, I was like, actually very mad. <laughs> yeah, right. At that. Just that categorization of like, kindness is funny. When it hurts you. Like, no. (laughs) No. No. Kindness until death is not funny at all. You're right to put it in Banana Split. It was confusing. (laughs) Yeah. Definitely. Chica, what's yours? Um, Yeah, so I sort of have two. One of them is kind of lighthearted and that the proprietress is scary (laughs) because why are you like this? (laughs) Like, why do you just start screaming like that? And then the point when she was chiding Kyo was just like, I'll apologize to the world for you. And it's like, why are you doing this? (laughs) Yeah, like you just need to take a deep breath, maybe have a little chocolate, sit down for a moment. (laughs) Yeah, just chill, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then my other banana split is kind of about Toru in that I wonder why Toru hasn't noticed Momiji and I guess not even just Momiji, just the parental situations of Kyo, Yuki, and Momiji. But in particular for this episode, Momiji, because in her eyes, up until the end of the episode, Momiji's in elementary school. So what type of parent would allow their child to do an overnight trip with their cousins to a hot spring? Why would they allow that? And so that's just something that I thought about. When I was watching the episode, it was just like, hmm, you know, like, obviously, I know that eventually Tor is going to find out, but it's just more of like, a, hmm, you know, like, I feel her antenna should have started going up. Right. And in Momoji in general, he's just kind of hanging around this building. You would think, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, where, where are your parents? I mean, I think he did mention that his father works there. Like, I know that I would hang out at my parents' office because, you know, my pop-up owned the building, you know, just waiting for them to finish up and go get dinner sometimes. Or maybe the hot spring was because it was Soma-owned. But there is still kind of weird undertones because they are, like, traveling by themselves. Yeah. You know, there's really no supervision. And they're teenagers, like, young teenagers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So my banana split is almost kind of going off of what Chika said in a way. Mm. So Yuki excuses himself to laugh about Toru missing the ping pong ball. And that's like very kind of funny and adorable that he does that. Like it's understandable that he doesn't want Kyo to see him laughing. That's fine. But he mentions that even his parents have never seen him laugh. Yeah. Which has incredibly sad undertones. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that is why that's in Banana Split for me. Just the very sad undertones. Right, right. I actually had that in Rocky Road because that where he's like, I've never never even laughed like this in front of my parents. I'm like, oh, boy. Mm. That's actually a great transition into Rocky Road if you want to elaborate on it or if you have any other Rocky Road points. Yeah. Yeah. Well, besides the idiot traveler scene, as I've we kind of covered on before, yeah, that scene where Yuki walked away from Toru and them. And was trying to, like, hide the fact that he was laughing and mentioned that he had never laughed that way even in front of his parents. That just got me. Mm -hmm. But also it was a really sweet scene between Yuki and 
and Toru. It was just super sweet. Yeah. Not even just like romantic wise. It was just a really cute scene between the two of them and their dynamic is so sweet. Yeah, definitely. I love that scene so much. Like mm-hmm. all the like Eric Vale jokes aside, it is just a really sweet, a sweet scene between them. It is. Yeah. Just even when you think about it, like... I guess going back to us talking about Yuki's parents, I do feel that it's because of how Toru is so connected to Kyoko to the point of taking her into the bath, which was one of my Rocky Road points. I don't know how she can be so connected to her mom and always talking about her mom. And then when people say certain things like that, then she doesn't clue in Mm. or think I should ask more questions about that. Because why hasn't your parents seen you laugh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. Um, I actually don't have any Rocky Road. So does anybody have any left? I mean, as Chika brought up the Toru bringing in her mom's photo mm. into the Hot Springs that just And also when she was talking about when they invited her to the Hot Springs, she was like, it's so expensive. My mom isn't able to come or something. I was like, oh, girl. She doesn't think she can experience anything without her mom. It was just super... Kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that almost like sad attachment she has. Mm -hmm. It's really sweet, but it's really sad. Definitely. Chica, do you have any more Rocky Road? Nope. Okay, moving into hot fudge, I do have one. Oh, I don't have any. Oh, I'm bringing the hot fudge this week. Oh this is so this is so fun, y'all. Like, ooh, I get to sit back this time. <laughs> I mean, this was a quick one-off at the end of the episode. We see that Shigure bought Toru a maid costume for White Day. Oh, yeah. He says, maybe she'll even call me master. And I'm just like, thank God Haru is there to say, you'll be arrested someday. I hope this was just Shigure being the jokey joke man because this never comes back up and it's never addressed because it's gross as fuck, man. I know. That actually is one of the things that I said here. Okay. I love that we're on the same page. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Like I said before with the last episode, there's some jokes in Fruits Basket that did not age well and this is one of them. Nope. Nope. There's a couple of things that Shigure says about young girls. I'm like, dude... (gasps) You didn't need to say that. (laughs) Yup. (laughs) Yup. Right. So disturbing. (laughs) But I mean, the thing is, is that the way that Takaya set up certain relationships, she doesn't have an issue with certain age gaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just very weird. But yeah, I had that and I had it in Ice Cream, You Scream. But honestly, because I guess, is it a slight, it's like slight spoiler, I guess. But I bet we all have an idea of where Shigure got the maid costume from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't think of that. <laughs> it's like foreshadowing. It is. I mean, because that episode's coming up. It's coming up, yeah. Is there any more hot fudge? I kind of just added how kindness is viewed as a weakness, which we covered on before. But that's about it for me. Okay. Let's move into ice cream, you scream. I actually don't have any. I just had that one hot fudge point. Chica, do you have any ice cream, you scream? I have one last one because the other two was like Shigure's gift. And then the what are they teaching in schools when it came to like this traveler story? Mm -hmm. So the last one that I have is about Momiji, where I basically just said, can you just decide to take somebody to a hot spring without knowing their schedule? Like, <laughs> I'm just a stickler about it. You know, you got to tell me in advance. You can't just show up the day before and be like, hey, you want to go to a hot spring? <laughs> like, no. Like, I'm going to need at least three weeks notice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I could have plans. I could have wanted to sleep in. And that's not saying that it's a bad gift, but it's just more so, you know, common courtesy. Yeah. You have to tell people in advance. You can't just decide and then come and stay at their house. And then everybody's changing their plans because of your whim. Like, no. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm surprised I didn't write that too. That is very funny. Yeah. Yeah, and also Tora has a job right. in school and homework. The girl's busy. Come on. Right, and isn't she picking up extra hours to pay off the school trip fee? Yeah, right. right? Like, didn't we just go over that? Right. Which is another reason why, like, uh, screw the grandpa. He should have just paid it. Why are you calling to ask? Right. What are you using the money for? Because mm-hmm. you're already living with, like, your kid and then their family. So you might as well use that money to help out your other grandchild. Right. right? Definitely. Are we ready to move into episode 12? Yeah, I think we're ready. All right. 
Episode 12, You Look Like You're Having Fun. Here is our soft serve summary <laughs> brought to us by Wikipedia. The second school year begins with Toru looking forward to greet Hatsuharu and Momiji as first years, with Kyo reluctantly accompanying her. Kyo is shocked to see that Momiji is wearing a girl's uniform and Hatsuharu is wearing jewelry. The two are scolded by the student council president Takei Makoto. Hatsuharu then aggressively defends Momiji and also proves why he has two different hair colors to Takei in the bathroom. Later, Toru meets Akito Soma on campus. When Yuki sees Toru with Akito, he rushes towards them, and after watching Yuki quivering in fear when Akito confronts him for skipping the New Year's celebration, Toru instinctively pushes Akito away. Akito then leaves the school grounds as Kyo watches from a distance. Back at the Soma estate, Shigure discusses with Hattori Akito's low opinion of Toru, the time where Akito psychologically tortured Yuki in the past, and the fact that Toru may be the one person who can soothe the pain, something that Akito does not understand. The episode ends with Toru and the others playing badminton until the sun sets. Hatsuharu thanks Toru for cheering Yuki up after the confrontation with Akito. Toru speaks with her mother in her thoughts, wondering what kind of zodiac spirit possesses Akito, despite being a little afraid of him. And that's our soft serve summary. Still a little unhinged, but I edited it a little bit. <laughs> so, getting into themes, Chica, what is your theme idea if you have one for this episode? I sort of have three. Oh. Okay, great, because I have none, so I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so one of them is just sort of harking back to, I think, what Sugar Ray said, that there are people who inflict pain and people who comfort others through that pain. Ooh. Mm. Okay. I really like that. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I then also had You Reap What You Sow, mm. which is in connection to Yuki and Kyo not going to New Year's. I knew that was going to come up. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, oh, okay, you reap what you sow. And then the last one is from Uo, and she says, real men don't bitch about details. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's great. Avery, what are your theme ideas if you have any? Mine is not as grand as Chica's, but I just kind of felt like it was moving forward from the past. I feel like there's a lot of characters growing forward this episode. Mm. And I feel like that was a very overall theme in it. Yeah. 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 Everybody's growing and becoming stronger versions of themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have any sprinkles on top? I also don't have any sprinkles on top for this episode. I don't know if this really counts as sprinkle on top or more of it being just an observation is that, that like Toru's first understanding of hatred and hostility comes from Akito. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's right. Yeah. 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 She's like, am I hated? Because she's not often hated. So she's like, oh, wow, this person doesn't really like me. Yeah. Avery, do you have any sprinkles on top? Kind of do. Okay. Toru was wearing Yuki's ribbon that he had given her the previous episode. Yes, yes. I noticed that. I know. And it's so sweet, but I don't know if I'm reaching. But I feel like it was kind of symbolic for the way Yuki confided in Toru this episode and how this episode he was leading on her a lot more and she was there to comfort him and bring him support. Mm. It felt like her wearing it was kind of just a hint that she was a little bit of hidden silent support from her just a small observation or detail that i like that's very cute i really like that yeah all right so let's get into floats your boat i'm, I'm actually gonna kick it off with a funny one i love seeing uo wearing a mask because she has a cold <laughs> and she doesn't want to spread it we stand yes. we love to see it <laughs> yes. i was actually watching the series for the first time when covid like quarantine was happening and i was like mm. Mm -hmm. like wow this is familiar right <laughs> especially after going through covid twice i am vaccinated y'all but still after going through covid twice i appreciate mask wearers so much mm -hmm. yeah chica what's one of your floats your boat my first one one is Uo and Kyo being similar and not caring about seeing first years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, we'll run into them eventually. Right, right. I like how they're very similar <laughs> in their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have another Uotani-like. Okay. I love when Kyo is like, 
I guess I'll go with you, Toru. Uo's like, it's crazy how hard it is for him to say no to her these days. And I just really <laughs> liked that observation. Yes. I like the cut to him just walking out with her. Yes, yes. Avery, what's one of your floats your boat? Ooh, I really liked the scene, the copy down scene with Kyo and Toru's. Yes. That was so good. And I love how it's very different than like typical scenes of that sort. Instead of him, you know, hitting the wall and then just to kind of cover her and go over her, he was doing it as a way to protect her instead. Mm -hmm. And instead of a more dominating thing. And I like that. It was cute. Yeah, I really much prefer that take on that kind of scene than other ways we've seen it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Especially in shoujo, you see it mainly more dominating. Mm -hmm. But this one was just super sweet. And it was just, he was just there to protect her. And his whole, oh, you can space out all you want when I'm with you. And I'm like, oh. And then she does yeah. it. Like, <laughs> yes, immediately. No question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that he just reiterates that she should feel safe around him. Mm -hmm. That's just so sweet you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes oh my gosh and it was such like a book talk moment too the forearm to the wall i was like oh my gosh <laughs> i know i scream this is where they get it from <laughs> um i actually just have one more floats your boat chica do you have any left yes but it's already sort of been mentioned just that toru was wearing yuki's ribbon yes mm -hmm. Which is very cute. Yes. But the last one that I have is actually um, Hatsuharu proving his <laughs> hair color. <laughs> Me too. That's what I have too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Triplets. I mean, like, Takei asked him to prove it. <laughs> so he yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I didn't understand it at first. Oh. A bit. Uh. I, I'm just so oblivious. And then it took me so I'm like, Oh, it's so good. But no, that scene is so funny. Yes, and then then <laughs> Toru asked, "How did you prove no. it?" And then both <laughs> Kyo and Yuki just knock him out. They're just like, "I can't stand Black Heart." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh, this is hilarious. Avery, do you have any floats your boat left? I do. It's a little small one, but I like the way that Toru had push Akito out of the way in the scene later on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right? I feel like people, like, oh, Toru's a doormat. Um, really? Because she's very kind, but I feel like she's the type of character that knows what right from wrong and will stand against wrong. Mm -hmm. And I like that. She... It was like, you're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. It was like instinctive too. Right. Which is what's really great about it. She says that she did it without even thinking. Right. She had the gall to push the person who nearly blinded Hattori without <laughs> right? thinking about it. That's how much she cares about the people she loves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like you got to see it in, on a smaller scale earlier in the episode when the class president guy was getting on Momiji's case and then she steps in front of Momiji to just be like, there's nothing wrong with what Momiji is wearing. Mm -hmm. And then in this case with Akito, it's much more serious. And then she still was just like, we need to get back to class because she could tell just by looking at Yuki, like how traumatized he was. Yeah. So it's just good to see that even whether it's a big issue or a small issue, like she'll stand up for her friends. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's where her kindness is so genuine because she, even though she's super kind and generous, she knows what's wrong and she isn't scared of getting in the way of it. That's what I love about her character so much. Yeah. Yes. This is not the definition of a doormat. At all. Yeah, not at all. Not by any means. She's a very, very naturally kind-hearted character that's written very well and realistically. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, so are we ready to move into Banana Split? Yeah, I think we are. Awesome. Okay, I actually don't have any Banana Split written for this episode. Chica, do you have any? Shigeru was talking about going to the school to, I guess, speak for Hatsuharu and Momiji. And then he was like, oh, I'm not going to go look at, you know, the new kids that are going into the school. And then both Yuki and Kyo were looking at him like he was crazy. And I was just like, I would look at you crazy too. Because low-key it's like banana split, ice cream, you scream, because why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just very predatory. Like, why? Yeah. He, again, this, how many times in a row of Shigure being <laughs> predatory? Yeah. Shigure's comments about high school girls is in my hot fudge for sure, but... Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and also, 
Ooh, that's dark, but I guess foreshadowing. Mm. But you know. okay. Um. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. You know, he's a creep, yeah. and he, <laughs> he is. he's been a creep for many years. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Avery, do you have any banana split? I actually do not. It's not for this one. Okay. That's totally fine. Chica, do you have any more or should we move into Rocky Road? I guess Rocky Road, if anyone has any, I don't. Mm. I do. I actually have two. Okay. So I'll actually start it off. My Rocky Road is all about Yuki, actually. So I could kind of put them in the one, even though they're two very different parts of the episode. The look on Yuki's face while Akito is guilt tripping and threatening him in front of Toru is absolutely heartbreaking to me. Mm -hmm. He is just so clearly traumatized by this person. He is shaking during and after the interaction with Akito. And it's really hard to see. Like, we know Yuki is sensitive on the inside and... You know, we're like sort of peeling back his layers slowly in these 11 episodes. And this is like the deepest look inside we have of him. Mm -hmm. And he's usually just so suave and so cool without even trying. And here he is trembling. And it's just so sad to witness. Yeah. My other rocky road was Yuki's thoughts when they were playing badminton at the end of the episode. I didn't write down the quote verbatim, but he's saying things or thinking things like, I wanted so many things. Parents who would hug me, a home, a warm person, a normal life. I'm like, I could like literally cry right now just like (laughs) reciting that. Like Yuki having fun with everyone warms his heart so much and is so healing for him. And I love that we're seeing this so immediately after his interaction with Akito like if there was any time to get the gang together to play badminton and just enjoy each other's company it was then so I really really loved the writing on that in this episode yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I agree just seeing him being able to one articulate some of the things that he wanted that regular people would have and then just knowing that he has people around him that can give him that warmth was just very good to see, but then also heartbreaking as well. Yeah, yeah. It's also a reminder that there isn't a timeline on anything. Mm -hmm. And just getting to a place where you're happy or like with people that make you happy, whatever happiness is for you or success is for you, can happen at any time. You don't have to be 16 or like 24 or even 28 or 32, like whenever it happens for you is good. It's just good that it happened. Yeah. It's not too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I have so many emotions right now. Oh, uh, I we, know. <laughs> do we have any more Rocky Road? Yeah, I honestly just going off of the whole thing with Yuki, this episode in general felt very Yuki centric. Mm-hmm. And him just kind of moving away from Akito and the Somas and trying to distance himself from them. I mean, moving to another school because isn't this school the one that Akito didn't want him to go to? Mm -hmm. And also Momoji and Haru are now attending it as well. This entire episode seems to revolve around them trying to distance themselves from Akito. But no, the whole thing that you said at the end with them playing badminton together and Yuki just, you know, being happy about it. I love his arc and it makes me cry. Me too. Yeah. That part got me. Yeah. That got me a lot. Definitely same. Moving from those feels into a different kind of feels, we're (laughs) going to get into some hot fudge. Chica, do you have any hot fudge for this one? Yes. Finally in this episode. (laughs) She has arrived. (laughs) I am back. (laughs) I have been unleashed. Okay. (laughs) So my hot fudge issue is kind of with Shigure, Mm -hmm. which I know is kind of unsurprising, but it's with Shigure, not because of him being weird about the high school girls, because that is weird. It's more so that this is him manipulating people. So he knew that Akito was coming, right? And I feel that he allowed that confrontation between Akito and Toru and Yuki to happen. Mm. Oh, yeah. And for me, 
I know that he literally said that he'll do anything to have his dreams come true. Like he'll manipulate whoever he has to, even if he hurts somebody for his dreams to come true. But I think that it's really messed up that he's showing that even in a school environment, these kids that live with him are not safe because he's attempting to do something that he's not letting them in on. And so it's just really frustrating overall to me because I feel that if another Zodiac was with Akito at the time, like let's say if it was Hattori rather than Shigure, then Hattori would have been like, oh, I guess it's time to go as your doctor. I'm saying that we should get back to the main house now. And maybe that meeting between Yuki and Akito and Toru wouldn't have happened because I think Hattori has more of a mindset of protecting the other Zodiac members than Shigure does. Um, And so it was just really nasty to see that play out because I just wanted to make sure to acknowledge that Shigure had a part in it. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels like he does, like you said, manipulates it to make it benefit him in some way. Yeah. This was the case here. He didn't stop it because in the end, it might come back to benefit him in some way. Right, mm-hmm. right. Just as when, even when the New Year's episode like happened and he was trying to freak them out about Toru, like, oh, there's a burglar, you know, that's been around and stealing stuff and whatever. I think he wanted them to stay back. I think he wanted this entire situation to happen for Akito to be angry enough to like seek them out and to see how they would react to this sort of thing. But yeah, so I just, I didn't, appreciate it. And then the last hot fudge thing that I had was just about Akito in general, which I mean, obviously we won't say anything because we know why Akito is the way that they are. But to say that Toru is ugly. Mm -hmm. I have this too. And that Yuki would go back to them. There's this implication that's there. And I mean, of course, I'm not saying why it's there, whatever. But Akito is in no place to call anybody ugly. That's all I got. (laughs) Yeah, Akito goes so far as to say, I have nothing to fear from a pathetic girl like that. You know, Toru isn't pathetic. Right. Well, you saw what she did, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And the way that Akito is saying, like, after all, Yuki's afraid of me. It's clear he can't stop thinking of me. And again, we know why, but again, we're keeping this spoiler free. Like, there's such a possessiveness there. Yeah. Like, you have an obligation to me. I own you kind of thing. Um, It's all very disgusting to me. Oh, yeah. It's yes. so, and honestly, I think Akito was scared of Toru. I think so, too. Yeah. you With how they're criticizing Toru and calling her ugly and all of these awful things. I'm like, no, you're, you're scared of her because you see how much of an impact she's having on all the somas. Mm-hmm. And a positive one, too, because... The impact Akito had on them isn't exactly positive, per se. Yeah. You know? So there's a lot of jealousy there. Yeah, I definitely see it. I definitely see it. Mm-hmm. Do we have any more hot fudge or are we good to go into ice cream, you scream? I do not have any more. Yep, I'm good. All right, let's get into ice cream, you scream. I actually just have one, so I might just toss it out there really quick. I just said that Kyo didn't have to punch Momiji for wearing a girl's uniform if that's what he preferred to wear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that as well. Yeah, me too. That's what I said. (laughs) I I was like, why is Momiji being treated that way for wearing what he wants? And he also looks great in it, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly think he's correct to say that he does look cute in the girl's uniform and probably would look cuter in the girl's uniform than the boy's yes. uniform. Yeah. And I think Momiji's outfits, I just want to say, Momiji is like a fashion icon. For yes. real. I love his outfit so much. The yeah. little hat? <laughs> right. I love the addition. I know. He has such a style going and I have always adored it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It also reminded me of like our feelings on Aoi Hyodo from Made Sama. Yes. Oh. I thought the same exact thing. Yeah. Just let people wear what they want to wear. Yeah. Right. Right. Do you have any more ice cream, you scream, Chica? Yeah, and one of mine was just the president saying, like, have you no male pride? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> like, come on now. <laughs> like, really? Right. So it's like, I don't know, if anybody has a, I don't know how to word this, but like, I guess I'll just say fragile masculinity and that'll sum it up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Avery, do you have any ice cream, you scream? 
No, it was just the one about Momoji wearing the girl's uniform and the way it was the whole male pride thing. I was like, come on now. Yeah. There's just, like I said, a few jokes that I'm like, eh, mm-hmm. did not age well. problematic. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of them. All right. So I actually just have a nuts point. Okay. So to end us off here with my nuts point, it's just that Akito meets Toru at school. <laughs> like that is the most unlikely meeting scenario. It seems to come out of left field. I, I remember um, the first time I watched it, my jaw like dropped when the car pulled up at school. I'm like, Akito's here? What? And like Akito's presence is striking and it is palpable through the screen they are terrifying even when being polite and i feel like there was no other place to put that than nuts for me Mm -hmm. yeah and the fact that toru just knew that that was akito yeah Yeah, right like she's seen him in the car she's seen him in the car and everything but like that they positively identify she could have very well thought that karina was akito or whatever but instead she just knew Mm -hmm. It was kind of crazy to just see that happen. And then the way that she bowed and then Akito just let that, let her stay like that for a little bit before talking, yeah. you know, foreshadowing right. on that and, as well mm, on who mm. they are in the Zodiac. But yeah. 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 It was a lot of ominous vibes. I, you see all of the introductions to the other Zodiacs being all lighthearted and goofy. And then she meets this person. It's like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. It's heavy. It's just dark. Mm-hmm. It was also... I don't know if I should mention it, but a little bit different in the manga. Oh. Because Chika had read the manga. I'm not sure if you remember, but the first introduction you get between Akito and Toru is actually when she's visiting Hattori at the Soma estate at the end there, I think. Mm. She sees Akito hanging out the window. Oh, oh yeah. With the wind chime. They didn't include it in the reboot. It was in the 2001 anime. You just unlocked a memory for me. <laughs> yeah. And that scene was crazy. I remember that. Right. Right. It's really good in the reboot, too. Yeah, in the reboot, they had Akito driving by in the car, and they make the eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I liked the window better. Oh, me too. I did. I'm a little, a little biased towards that one. Yeah. yeah. I think it's more ominous. It mm-hmm. is. Like, not that Akito wasn't scary in this episode, but for Toru to meet Akito after learning about Hattori and what happened to him, and then here you just see them just sitting in the- that's a lot. Ooh, yeah, yeah it's that, heavy. that's a lot. I wonder why they changed it. I know. There's a few different changes that they made to the reboot. Not all that I disagree with, but there is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think with that, that brings us to the end of episode 44 of Shoujo Sunday. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us. And thank you so much, Avery, for being part of this episode. This has been so much fun. Oh my gosh. I know. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Again, this is just crazy. Oh. It was so much fun. Thank and you. And these are episodes that I love. So. Oh, I'm glad that you got to come on for some faves. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Before we get into our usual outro, I just want to do our patron shout out. So thank you to our patrons, starting with our Sprinkles patrons. We have Gloves, Akemi, Pete, and PJ. For our Whipped Cream patron, we have Mark M. And for our Hot Fudge patrons, we have Mackenzie. Aaron, AJ, and Mark D. Thank you all so much for being our patrons. Thank you. If you guys are interested in our ice cream social content, which we are probably going to change up in the future because I suddenly have to work an extra day a week from now on. <laughs> it was sprung on me. Yeah. No. So guys, um, things are moving on a little bit differently, but that's fine. So our ice cream socials, since Gianna now has to work an extra day a week um, at her job, we are kind of switching things up. So rather than you guys getting an ice cream social like live stream, we're going to have licorice live action instead so we're announcing that now i don't think that for october we're starting i think we're starting in november Mm -hmm. but basically we are going to now be reviewing shoujo live action episodes and our first series that we're doing is one of my favorites i think i mentioned this in our like qa episode hana yori dango the japanese version live action i'm so excited to introduce gianna to this it's gonna be so much fun but yeah it's like think of it as us doing a light 
lighter version of what we do on the podcast. But yeah, we'll be analyzing each episode. So it's like one per month of the very first season. And it's going to be a fun time. So yeah, I think this comes out in October, this particular podcast episode. So guys, please tell a friend, coworker, or just people in general who really did love like the Hanayori Dango Japanese live action that we're going to be covering it and you should become a whipped cream patron in order to get access to our reactions on it. Yes, and if you're interested in Shonen Sunday, which is a watch-along live stream podcast with Chica and I, we are getting to the tail end of Chainsaw Man. So if you want to be there for that, because (laughs) last month was a doozy uh yeah (laughs) um that's all i'll say on that the bot is there on patreon too if you become a hot fudge patron so that is open to our hot fudge patrons only so yeah we got a lot of fun stuff going on on patreon but apart from that we are all also on socials but i would like to go to our guest first where can everybody find you avery well i am basically only on twitter as kyoru yi yi and or avery and that's basically where i am i'm just unhinged all the time (laughs) yes and oh my gosh let me just say this like psa y'all leave avery the fuck alone like i don't know why every week this girl she just will live her life and then y'all will take one of her tweets and then go crazy on it that one guy that made that youtube video (laughs) fuck you your family your destiny, whatever you have plans on, screw it all. Like, that was so <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. All she did was state her opinion, and you can't handle it, and you sent your little incel bitches to go attack her. Fuck you for that. And then on top of it, I would like to just say, Avery, it's your account. So, Kyoru Yi Yi, you can post whatever the fuck you want to post mm-hmm. because it's your account. Oh, thank you. You don't need to thank get you. permission to do certain things. Now, are there some titles that I think that maybe you should sort of hold off of because these people are kind of crazy and I don't want them to come after you? Yes. But for the most part, I really do think you should be able to post whatever it is that you want because you made that account the way that it is today and you have thousands of followers because people like what you have to say. So, yes. I just wanted to get that out, y'all. Period. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, thank you. That actually means a lot. I I honestly, with all the hate, it's actually kind of helped me in some way. I'm a very sensitive person, but I've like become numb to it. You know, the haters, they suck, but thank you for making me a stronger person, I guess. So, yeah, yeah I'll look at it that way. <laughs> but, you know, I survived. Yeah. I'm hoping it like stays behind you, though. Like, yeah. You yeah. don't need any of that energy. Fruits oh, basket no. and Kyoru energy only. Yes, exactly. Kyoru Yigi all the way. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So if you're interested in following us, keeping up with us throughout the week, you can follow the podcast at Shoujo Sunday across all socials. And all socials includes Blue Sky and Threads because t- Twitter might be imploding, but we are navigating. You can also join our Discord server. You can find the link to join. It is completely free and lots of fun in our Discord server. You can find the link in our bios across all socials. And if you would like to keep up with us, individually throughout the week. I am Gianna Luna. You can follow me at Gianna underscore Luna underscore across all socials and that also includes Blue Sky and Threads. If you're interested, guys, I I am a musician. I just released my debut single Twilight Champagne at the end of August. So that'll be a month ago now when this episode comes out. So if you're interested in like dreamy indie pop music you can check out twilight champagne it's gianna luna on spotify bandcamp apple music wherever you stream music it will be there but yeah chica where can the people find you guys you can find me at chica supreme on twitter blue sky instagram threads um i have a tiktok i'm not really active posting right now but yeah you can find me there and that's chica with a k and not two c's all right guys thank you so much for tuning in with us thank you again to avery for chatting with us oh and thank you guys i'm zamillion this was amazing so much fun oh this is so fun uh we will see you all in a couple weeks with some more fruits basket content we will see you then bye, bye. bye.